Hi everyone, my name is Grant Kramer and I am a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, I will be talking about potassium deficiency in my backyard vineyard. You will find out what the symptoms look like and how I dealt with it and why potassium is important in grapes. My Backyard Vineyard, Season 2, Episode 4, Potassium Deficiency. Okay, last year I had a soil analysis done and the analysis showed that the potassium concentrations in my soil were low. The plant on the right is showing symptoms of what I would say was potassium deficiency. But I had also an iron deficiency because of a higher pH in my soils. And this could potentially have been iron deficiency. So I initially sprayed my plants with an iron chelate, but the yellowing on the edges of the leaf were still there. And if you compare them to the plants on the left here, the leaf's deficiency symptoms for potassium, you can see that the deficiency symptom is very similar and varies with cultivar to some extent and the extent of potassium deficiency. These images are of mild potassium deficiency. Let's take a deeper look into potassium for a moment. First of all, potassium is coming from the soil. And if you look at the right hand upper figure, you can see the potassium cycle in the soil. Potassium minerals originate from bedrock. Clays have a micellar structure, which are layers of clay with potassium fixed in between those layers. The potassium diffuses to the edge of the clay particle and becomes exchangeable potassium. That potassium dissolves into solution and can then be taken up by the plant roots. Other ways that plants can get potassium is through fertilizer or from organic matter such as manure. Potassium is an important osmotic component that allows water to be taken up into the plant. As you can see on the lower right hand figure, you can see the process of osmosis, where water flow is driven by the higher ionic concentrations, in this case of potassium, inside of a cell which is separated by a semi-permeable membrane. The outside concentration of potassium is lower and this higher concentration in the cells of potassium lowers the osmotic potential, as we say in plant physiology. And in turn, it lowers the water potential. This allows for water to move. Water moves from high water potential to low water potential. So potassium is very important for water uptake into plants, as we can see in the right-hand side of the figure, where we see high concentrations of potassium inside the cells of a plant root with low concentrations out in the soil. Probably a difference of 100 times in concentration. And so water is taken up into the plant by this process. Water can leave the plant if the salt concentration in the soil solution is too high, as we see in the bottom here. So if the concentration of ions is higher than what is inside the root, then water by osmosis can be withdrawn out of the root. And anything in between is going to reduce the rate of water flow. So potassium is very important in water uptake into the plant and maintaining turgor in the living cells. Potassium is also important for certain enzyme activities. And it is an important component of grape juice. Increases in Uptake of potassium can result in a precipitation of tartaric acid and a higher pH in the juice, and too much potassium can reduce the wine quality. With too high of a pH, you can get contamination of bacteria in your wine and thus create a reduced wine quality. Higher concentrations of potassium in the plant, on the other hand, may make the vine more drought tolerant since it's able to absorb water more readily from soils that have even lower amounts of water and also keep that water in the plant. Okay, so it looks like we have a potassium deficiency symptom. What can we do about it? One option would be to 
spray the plant with a potassium solution, such as we did with the iron treatment. However, foliar spraying has not been effective for treating potassium deficiency in grapevines, as listed here in this citation. Generally, what's recommended is that potassium sulfate is applied to the vine and the soil, not potassium chloride, because that can start to build up in the plant and become toxic. The chloride in particular is known to cause some issues with grapevines over time. So in one report, there was an application of about 0.22 to 0.44 pounds of potassium per vine to the soil was effective for about a two year period. And by applying a little bit more, one could get potassium deficiency corrected for at least three years. I've decided then that I'll treat my soils with potassium sulfate. Potassium sulfate is also known as sulfate of potash. So the potassium salt could be mixed directly into the soil like a fertilizer, but that would take time for the potassium to dissolve into solution into the soil and get taken up into the roots in a gradual process similar to what would be normally happening in the soil. However, I want to speed up the process and get the potassium into the plant at a much faster rate. I wanted to dissolve it in a gallon of water and in order to do that at a concentration of 20 millimolar potassium, which is a little bit high, I'm going to add 15 grams of potassium sulfate because the potassium sulfate is 50% potassium sulfate, it's not 100%. And this will equal out to be 20 millimolar potassium or 10 millimolar potassium sulfate. To get the potassium to dissolve, I'm going to have to stir it in vigorously. As I said, this concentration is a little bit high for grapes and osmotically it may have potential of inhibiting water uptake to some extent. So I'm going to dilute this potassium concentration with tap water after applying the potassium treatment. As the basins around the vines that I have cut out take about a gallon of water, I will dissolve the potassium in a gallon of water and add it to the basin and then follow it up with another gallon of just fresh water. This will serve to push down the potassium deeper in the soil and dilute the concentration. Let's take a look at the results of my potassium treatment after five days. On the left is the original plant before treatment with potassium, and on the right is the plant five days later. You can see that the plant is much greener and the yellowing has disappeared. This indicates that the potassium treatment was effective and the plant was indeed potassium deficient. In conclusion, the soil nutrient analysis indicated that my soils were low in potassium and the leaf yellowing symptoms that I had in a couple of vines looked similar to potassium deficiency symptoms in grapevine leaves. A potassium treatment of 20 millimolar potassium alleviated the symptoms after just five days. After that, I treated all the other vines with potassium fertilizer without any detrimental effect to the vines. Future petiole analysis that I am performing will either confirm or deny whether the potassium supplementation was effective. So stay tuned because in the future I will address some of these nutrient issues based upon what we now know from new soil analyses from this year and petiole analysis of the plants. Well that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. There will be future videos about mineral nutrition of grapevines and what I've discovered in my vineyard this season in season two. If you like this video, then please like it on my YouTube channel as it'll give an opportunity for other people to enjoy this video because it'll bring it to their attention. Have a great day.